Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. Wow, wow, wow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful moment to be connected to you on your favorite Good Life devotion. This is God's voice to the nations of the earth in these final days of the church's history to bring the body of Christ into that state of maturity and effect the greater soul harvest into the kingdom. This thing is of God. And it is his answer to the heart cry of many who have been looking for truth on a consistent basis. Don't keep this to yourself. You know the story of the four lepers? When their conditions were so terrible, and by the word of God, they went into the enemy's camp and found booty. They said, we don't do well if we sit here and eat while our brethren die. Do you have a friend, a family member, a colleague? Don't be watching the gulai alone secretly in your room. Let someone else know about it. There's no one that has recommended the gulai devotion to somebody and has regretted it. You will surely be thanked for that recommendation. That could be your Samaritan ministry. The Samaritan woman didn't need to do much. All she went to say is, come and see this man. Could he be the Messiah? And when they themselves came, they said, we believe not because you told us, but because we have heard for ourselves. Pray into the regular devotion. Recommend it. Pay to get it to other media platforms. It must penetrate every home and reach every life on the earth. This is what God sent it to be. It has been awesome. Eating along the lines of the titles of Jesus. These are descriptions of his nature, his influence, his abilities, and all that. And I kept on hammering on the fact that though you might know them already, keep receiving. For on one of these days, the light and the reality of the truth will dawn on you. And you become so one with the truth that you can hardly live outside the truth. This is the difference between Christians who live biblically and those who are living by the ways of the world. They've all been hearing the same thing, but to one group it is yet theory. To the other, it has moved from what they hear to what has become part of them. I cause to rest on you the grace of the ministry of reality of this word. In the name of our Lord Jesus. So we started introducing ourselves to the subject of titles. We looked at Jesus being Lord, Jesus being alive, the living Jesus, the divine Jesus. And today we'll be looking at Jesus the King. The King Jesus. So Jesus is not only Lord, he is also King. Just before we zoom in on what we have for today, let's share a word of prayer. Daddy, we love you. That we praise you, we glorify you, we honor you for the truth you are giving to us on a daily basis. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, our main scripture is Ephesians, and we are reading from the Passion Translation. It says that, and now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. He is 
gloriously enth enthroned over every name that is ever praised. Not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. This is so solemnly amazing. Talking about Jesus, I said, he is now exalted as first above every ruler. A ruler in the house, in the community, in the company, in the continent. Every ruler. Jesus is exalted first above every authority, every government, every realm of power in existence. So whether it is in the heavenlies or on the earth or in the regions underneath the earth, as long as it is a realm of power, Jesus is exalted as first above all. He says that he is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised. Hmm. Not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. Every name that is being praised now in any country, anywhere, will soon come to an end. Either by the person's death physically or when Jesus comes. But the name of Jesus will continue to resound with praises from age to age for world without end. This is Jesus, the King. We put it that after Jesus resurrected from the dead, whilst talking to his disciples, he levitated and was received by a cloud into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. There he was crowned with glory and honor. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. I read that to you. Let me actually just read it to you. The reading of the scriptures is powerful. It says, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. You know, in the previous episode, I was teaching why Jesus had to be made like man for the suffering of death. Because as God, he couldn't be brought under the suffering of death. Okay? But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He's crowned with glory and honor. So when he was received into heavens, he was coronated and crowned with glory and honor and enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high. And this is the CV of his portfolio now. A position far above all principality, that's ruling figures, all power, that's authorities. All might, that is all power. All dominion, that is the domains of rule. Some, some people's domain is their house. Some do, their, their domain is a community. Some people, their domain is a country. Others, their domain is some few countries. Now, it, it doesn't matter what is the extent of any person's domain. The domain of Jesus ranges from heaven to underneath the earth. It swallows up every other possible extent of domain. And then it says, and every name that is named in this world and in that which is to come. He was highly exalted by the Father and given a title above every title. That's the name. A title that causes every knee in heaven, every knee on the earth, and every knee underneath the earth to bow. And that title causes every tongue to declare his lordship. I read it to you, Philippians 2, 9 to 11, in some episodes ago. Maybe I should read it to you again. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, Wherefore God also had highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. This is where he's seated. Wow. The Bible says that he is the king of glory. So the kingdom, the rulership of Jesus, it cannot be compared with any earthly kingship. Jesus is the king of glory. When you talk about glory, you're talking about the weight of divinity. It's a higher matter. It's a matter of the divine. It is beyond earthly governance. 
It is beyond angelic governance. He's the king of glory. <laughs> Psalm 24. Let's look at Psalm 24. I love my Bible. Sometimes I wonder what would we have done without the Bible. Hey, Bible is amazing. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. You remember, those of you at, at that NCC, I think I was in 2018, I shared with you from here, when Jesus led captivity captive and was ascending into the heavenly um, Zion with this, all these people that he led after he defeated Satan in hell, go to the gates. And because, you know, only the word was known. They didn't know Jesus. And he says, gates open. They say, who are you? He says, I am the king of glory. Praise God. Now, we put it that these things we have read to you about the portfolio of Jesus, where he is seated, his enthronement, and all that, these are not poetry. It is not something beautifully written to, you uh, uh, know, no, sometimes people give good speeches to great people, good speeches to people in authority to make them feel good and no, uh, high sounding. These are not so. Each one of these scriptures, each one is a fact about Jesus. He is really first in rank. So, in fact, like you go into a school and there are teachers, then there is the headmaster. Jesus is the headmaster of authority. So, ideally, anyone that is made head of an institution or maybe a, a, a community or a country or a continent, the first thing he should do is to salute the headmaster and begin to take instructions from the headmaster to see how to function properly in whichever jurisdiction he is. Praise the Lord. This is how it should be. But you know, as it is now in the physical, a lot of principalities and rulers are not aware of a universal king. And it is because, according to God's own determination, at this time, he is not supposed to physically showcase himself. He has relegated that glory, that honor to his church. And the church is still growing. Okay? And the Bible said that an heir who has not yet matured, he will not differ from other slaves around. So because the church is still growing, there's no dichotomy, there's no difference between the church and human beings. But since the final move of the Spirit was launched in 2019 and the truth of God's word has started going forth into nations, many are getting awakened to the divinity of the church. And the church is beginning to stand out as the divine ones. And when many more of God's sons and daughters catch the facts of these truths and begin to live from the divine nature that they are, then it will become plain to the whole world that actually there was a king, Jesus, who was ruling over the world, but they never knew. Maybe I should show you something for you to appreciate what I'm saying. It's such a joyful thing given to the church by Jesus Christ. If you read um, Hebrews chapter 10, let's look at the plan of God after the ascension of Jesus. From verse 12, it says that, But this man, talking about Jesus when he was man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. That's where we talk about Jesus sitting at the right hand of the majesty. And then it says, From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his fools too. So Jesus sat down. And he is expecting till every rebellion to his governance in heaven, on earth, and underneath to be brought underfoot. So he's not the one to do it. 
after he rose again, according to divine plan, he is sitting and expecting that to be done. Why would he have this expectation? Let's go to Psalm 110. Let me show you something. Because the father promised him something like that. Psalm 110. He says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy fools too. So before he died, it was written that when he comes and he's made Lord, the Almighty will say, sit down at my right hand and I'm going to make your enemies your fools too. In other words, there will be people trying to rebel against your reign, but I'm going to abort all of them under your feet. So after he rose again, he's sitting down expecting that to be done. But how is that going to be done? Look at verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. So, some beings, or there's going to be a power from Zion. If you go to Hebrews 12, Bible says that we are come to Zion. Those of us who are born again, we are born again in Zion. So, we've been sent forth from Zion to exercise the power of the reign of Jesus over all these rebellious beings until the reign of Christ is so apparent. And that is why in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, if you look at the 25th verse, it says that he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. So already he is sitting and expecting the enemies to be under feet. And yet he must reign. How is he going to reign? The rod of his strength is turned from Zion. Don't forget in Isaiah it said that the government shall be upon his shoulders. So Jesus is the head of the church or the body. And then from his shoulders talks about the bodies. That's where the government is. So the exercise of his governance, his kingship, is in the hands of the church. And the Bible says of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. So his influence will continue to expand from coast to coast, city to city, until it is known that there is a great king that ruleth over every form of leadership in every state in heaven on the earth and underneath the earth. So this is why for now, many don't know and they may even talk anyhow against him and he doesn't know. But wait, wait, just wait, just be cool. The glorious church has begun to manifest. And not long from now, in every nation and from every realm of existence, the reign of Christ will be so apparent in every scope of life. And men and women, angels and beings of unseen world will begin to acknowledge that Jesus indeed is king. But even now, he's king. And we are telling you about that because the scriptures have said so. I'm going to go in a short break when I return. We'll look more on this subject of Jesus being king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! That greatest revival that the scriptures, saints of old and saints of this time have prophesied about is finally at hand. Join Dr. David Binden and other sons and daughters of God all over the world on Revival Breeze as we pray to bring into physical manifestation that greatest move of the spirit that our heavenly father has orchestrated to hit the earth in our time starting sunday 5th of june 2022 and showing every sunday at 4 p.m gmt venue good life center 2 collegono revival breeze will be showcased live on metro tv and revival breeze channel youtube do not miss it life is good enjoy wow wonderful people of god amazing days in the calendar of god have come upon us and we must quickly gather ourselves to work with god the lord jesus by his grace has shown me that greatest revival that has been divinely orchestrated to hit the earth, shake every nation, and sweep over half of the world's population into the kingdom of God. And I'm set to bring you the details of this vision in our maiden edition of Revival Breeze coming to you live on Metro TV on the 5th of June this year. Don't miss it. Hallelujah. Oh. 
Praise God. All right, so let me read the scripture to you. I was telling you that the description is as if you are in a school and there are teachers and then there's a head teacher. And so every teacher teaches, but the one to whom they all report is the head teacher. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says that, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So say, we are complete in Christ. And who is he? Who is this Christ? He is the head of all principality and power. Principality here are ruling figures. And power means authority. So all authority heads up in Jesus. <laughs> the day a child of God understands this, you will, you will begin to, to think some way. The fear of what the devil can do either as a figure or through the systems of the world will, will disappear from you. Because everything truly heads up in Jesus. It may begin in the physical as if it's not heading up. But when it is exerted, everything will acknowledge that indeed it is. Because the only thing is to be able to bring it forth from the spirit. And everything will acknowledge in the physical that so it is. But the sons of God are now growing to learn, to operate from the realities of the spirit. So that they can bring to bear on the earth. Because all the things I've read to you about Jesus, they are facts in the spirit. And those of us who sit there know that these are clear facts. But on the other side of life, which is on the earth, Many don't see it. They seem to be high sounding facts without reality on the earth. But they do have facts and realities on the earth. So what is God doing? Teaching his body through avenues like the New Creation Conference and uh, the Gulag Devotion and other teaching materials and teaching programs. Bring the church to the acknowledgement of his divinity. And once we all get to know the Holy Spirit as our father, he will take us on a journey of tutoring us to walk in our divinity. And all these virtues and realities in the spirit will be brought forth into the earth. These are amazing days. And that's why if you're a child of God, don't deprive yourself of the truth of God's word. Where we are going is so beautiful. Don't resign to the lifestyle of the foundation. The church was supposed to have a foundation, a babyhood stage. It's a stage where they wouldn't differ from slaves. It's a stage where suffering was permitted. A stage where... Whatever happens to the world was expected to happen to them because they were babes. But it was also supposed to come to a stage of maturity where they will no more be subject to the elements. Now we are at that stage. Don't hold on to the babyhood stage and suffer for nothing. Oh, praise God. We put it that his kingdom is everlasting and his dominion endures throughout all generations. Psalm 145 verse 13, you can read it for yourself. So Jesus is king. You may not see it now, but I'm telling you the truth in the spirit. And very soon, in fact, as we speak now, it has started happening in many nations of the earth where sons of God are beginning to know who they are in pockets. But gradually, we are coalescing and, and then we are conglomerating at a point as the truth of God is going around to all of us. And then very soon in North America, in Asia, in Australia, in Africa, in Europe, everywhere, it will be known that these are the sons of God and Jesus is king. Hallelujah, because it's already known in the spirit. These are beautiful spiritual facts that we enjoy. Sitting in the company of the Godhead. You can also be part of this. You will see life from a different perspective. And not only will you see it, you will experience it from that perspective. Why resign to a humanistic life when God has made this great life of divinity available to you? It is available if you receive Jesus today and become born of God to become a son of God. What does it take? Believe that God raised Christ from the dead, declare him as Lord, and you will receive eternal life to replace the human life in you. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died and rose again. And by your resurrection, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit now by saying, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. If I've done this with all your heart, truly you are born again. Ensure that you continue to follow us on a daily basis and receive two that will help you to get planted a Bible teaching and practicing church and remain in Christ until he comes. Over this weekend, I'm going to meet you on Metro TV exclusively on the weekend.
editions. And then Monday again, we'll come again to see ourselves if Jesus tarries. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Oh, hallelujah. That greatest revival that the scriptures, saints of old and saints of this time have prophesied about is finally at hand. Join Dr. David Binden and other sons and daughters of God all over the world on Revival Breeze as we pray to bring into physical manifestation that greatest move of the spirit that our heavenly father has orchestrated to hit the earth in our time starting sunday 5th of june 2022 and showing every sunday at 4 p.m gmt venue good life center 2 collegono revival breeze will be showcased live on metro tv and revival breeze channel youtube do not miss it life is good enjoy wow wonderful people of god amazing days in the calendar of god have come upon us and we must quickly gather ourselves to work with god the lord jesus by his grace has shown me that greatest revival that has been divinely orchestrated to hit the earth, shake every nation, and sweep over half of the world's population into the kingdom of God. And I'm set to bring you the details of this vision in our maiden edition of Revival Breeze coming to you live on Metro TV on the 5th of June this year. Don't miss it. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on the screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.